And uh, some of these established uh, gangs are very smart in the way they, they scout the area and the way they uh, try to locate uh, people to recruit. Yo, it's your boy King Dave here and this is the Fallon Show. Hope all is going well. Um, how about you introduce yourself, my Uso, and uh, what, what you're doing currently? Yes, hi, David. Uh, kia ora, talofa. Uh, my name is Laumua Tunufai. Uh, it's a nice Samoan name. Uh, I, I lecture at University in Criminology, uh, Auckland University of Technology to be exact, uh, in Criminology, and uh, also supervise and do research uh, within the field of um, youth crime, restorative justice, and youth justice in general. All right, so a criminologist. All right, so um, man, thank you so much for jumping on and um, sort of sharing your views today on um, what's going on in the, in the system right now. So yeah, so you're a criminologist originally from Samoa, and um, and and as well, you're looking at the over over representation of Polynesians in the criminal justice system. So um, I guess to start us off, brother. So so what is it that you do? Could you sort of um, go into that a little bit more? Okay. So in terms of teaching, you know, I teach um, restorative justice, understanding restorative justice, which is part of our uh, youth criminal justice system. And restorative justice is now, you know, being used to for adult uh, criminals. And I use that term quite carefully, uh, with all due respect to a whole lot of different people who have been implicated in some sort of crime. Uh, but you know, these people are very good people, very good people, you know, especially our young people. Uh, a whole lot of them you know, come from very good homes. You know, that's from our perspective, our cultural perspective. These are our tamariki, these are our young people. And uh, my, my personal perspective about young people is, you know, they're still in the process of developing to maturity. And so some of the things that they do uh, may appear to be like um, uh, deviant in our perspective as old people, as uh, the dominant society and culture, but down, you know, to the really bottom of everything, to the real bottom of everything, they are good people. Sometimes our young people do things that appear to be criminal, but in actual fact, it may be a reaction to uh, some injustices that have been ongoing for a very long time, uh, not only within our society, but also within the structure of everything, including the structure of the criminal justice system. So we ask the question of, why is it that Year in, year out, uh, poor Māori young people are always overrepresented in criminal justice uh, statistics. And then on top of that, you've got Māori wahine, okay? Uh, our poor wahine are now coming up to be se severely overrepresented in criminal justice system. And uh, so the conclusion from those who look in who look from the outside into our culture will say, well, these people are very bad people. They've got a criminal, you know, some, somebody even had the nerve to suggest that Maori people commit crime or overrepresent in criminal figures because they have a criminal gene. Criminal gene. They sort of uh, watered it down by saying it's a warrior gene, which is rubbish. It is rubbish to me. And so a lot of people are not looking into the, the causes of the tsunami, which in my view is the structure and the injustices that have been in place for a very long time. And uh, usually when you stereotype somebody, you know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so, yeah, that's basically the nitty gritty of what we're doing. Yeah. I also teach another paper called uh, Understanding Crime and Deviance. And another paper in the master's level uh, called uh, Youth Crime. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, well, just to touch on what you've just said. So, yeah, it is pretty tough coming up as a Polynesian, you know, an islander or a Māori. Um, we do get looked at in society as, um, I guess, criminally inclined, you could say, as a as a race, some people say, which is obviously yeah. rubbish, you know. But, um, 
Look, what, what, so what are some common causes? Are, are we talking like poverty? Are we talking um, domestic violence in the homes, that sort of stuff? All those things are, are outcomes. They are not the causes of crime and criminality. And I say that with all due respect as well. You know, as you have rightly pointed out, you know, the common chain in America is, you know, amongst uh, the blacks is my, my skin is my sin. And uh, it's almost uh, true here in Aotearoa, New Zealand as well. You know, if, if, you're, if you're Polynesian, if you're from the islands and living in South Auckland, that's enough to be written off as somebody who is bad. Look at politicians and what they have done. A few years back, uh, the national uh, MP Lee, uh, I think she was uh, from Mount Albert, the constituency around there. Uh, when the new motorway was opened up from the airport going onto the tunnel, she said something awful, uh, like, uh, you know, she's happy that the the motorway is there that will deter uh, young criminals from South Auckland from easily entering uh, their, their turf, meaning when they hit the motorway, they go straight into town rather than going off into uh, Mount Albert and those more this, affluent this is kind of MP, societies. A national MP this is that. a national MP uh, who is, um, I believe, Asian. Wow. Uh, by descent, and That's so my, my point in here by pointing out, you know, Lee, Melissa Lee, is that you know, this kind of understanding, the stereotypes, has been in New Zealand for a very long time, and then all of a sudden, migrants who come in, uh, who prefer to side up with the dominant culture, uh, will think that, oh, okay, then. Uh, what's happening in New Zealand is if you go to South Auckland, you're, you're going into the hub of criminal activity. And by doing that, they're just making it worse as well by like sort of isolating, is it? Isolating certain areas of Auckland. Well, if migrant communities are starting to look at Pacific people and Maori people, you know, as such, uh, it worries me. It worries me that uh, they're picking up these tones uh, from the circles of politicians, I mean, of politics, economics, and everything else. So poverty, like I said earlier, poverty is only an outcome of something, an injustice that has been in place for a very long time. Look at housing. Look at, you know, the way some of these things have been allocated. Uh, uh, look at education policies, Okay. Uh, we, we always say uh, it's an it's, um, equal kind of opportunity given to everybody. Of course, it is an equal opportunity. Everybody has the same opportunity to go to uni. But look carefully at some of the policies that have been put into place. For example, right now, StudyLink supports you with your bachelor's, your first degree. But once you come to your master's, you can't apply for study link anymore. So the question is, some of these young people who are very intelligent from South Auckland, you know, very smart upstairs, who have aced everything in their undergraduate degrees, okay? Once they get onto that, if they don't get a scholarship, of course, they will have to go to work. And that's the end of their educational journey so yeah. what why yeah. do we have such a policy when that is the critical point when a lot of these young people need to be supported financially by the government so again the government is putting this into place which in my view and not as not just me a whole lot of us have been talking about this putting this into place effectively halts the academic uh, journey of very intelligent young people from South Auckland and from Māori and Pacific backgrounds. I know exactly what you mean. It, it goes quite deep with all of this, doesn't it? Like, um, I know that, you know, in South Auckland, a lot of the schools there more push the students towards work placement, you know, sort of getting them into the workforce. Yep. 
Whereas, you know, um, schools located, you know, here on the shore, they push them much more towards education, you know, much more towards going to uni and things like that. So very unfortunate. It's it's way it's, it's really like you've said, the way that they've set it up, really. Uh, Apirana Ngata, you know, people like uh, Nelson Mandela, Apirana, you know, are not wrong by saying it's time that we reach out to the stick, uh, to the plant of the Pakeha, which is education. Uh, the only way for us to be successful here, or should I say, uh, the, the best way to be successful is to, and to belong, uh, is to uh, have your education. All right, so sort of um, moving on to, you know, your, your work as a criminologist and in criminology, um, what, what are some of the, um, you know, looking into the crimes? So what, what, what are sort of like the, the crimes that a lot of these youths are committing? You know what I mean? Young Maori youth or young Polynesian youth? Is it, is it sort of, um, you know, stealing or is it more violent crimes? Is it Maori young people are overrepresented in total crime including very trivial kind of crimes. Now, we need to understand as well that a definition of um, violent crime, okay, assault, uh, includes pulling somebody <laughs> and pushing somebody. Now, a lot of us, we do that, you know, pull and, pull and push. You know, we shove people around. Uh, as far as the law is concerned, that's a violent crime. That's assault. And as far as the records are concerned and the statistics are concerned, you know, it's one count, two counts, three counts. But it's just pulling and pushing, shoving people around. Okay, and all of a sudden, we come up as being very violent. Yeah. Now, Samoan young people are not overrepresented in total crime, but they're overrepresented in violent crime mainly because of that. You know, once you start getting charged with those sort of, sort of things, especially it can spiral out of control. You know, just... Well, once it's in your record, it's in yeah. your record. Yeah, Okay. exactly. And the other thing we look at is uh, why is it that some other young people who have committed very violent kind of stuff, okay, get away with it. Uh, say, for example, there was a group of uh, young people, Pakeha young people, I think there were about four or six of them who gang raped uh, some young girls and then even posted them up and they went free. What? Went free. Really? Imagine if it was somebody from South Auckland. What would have happened? Yeah. I used that case as a case study in some of my classes, gave it to my classes, and uh, some of the students were shocked yeah. that some of these young people even bragged online, you know, took pictures and blasted, you know, their accounts with uh, some of these pictures, walked free. Yet yeah, a poor young person in South Auckland who walks along the street, maybe just tags a tagging, yeah, you're defacing somebody's property, but that compared to raping, okay, uh, the, the, the best reaction the law could have done, you know, to somebody who's be, who would be attacking a fence would be, okay, you're going back to that fence. You're going to sandpaper it down and we'll give you a spray can for you to paint it up again. That is how we Maori and Pacific uh, people deal with some of these problems. We, go, we, we don't lock them up in prison because locking them up will cause the young person to question Whoa, what is it that I've done? If yeah. if I if I I'm that bad, then of course you haven't seen the worst of me. So, okay, you're going to see uh, the best criminal uh, yeah. actor from me in two years' time, yeah, and exactly. then from then on it goes uh, downhill. Self fulfilling yeah. prophecy. Yeah, that's awful to hear this stuff, eh? Because it is so entrenched in society and there's just so much more going on than, yeah, poverty. And um, it's just almost pushed onto people. And um, yeah, like you said, once once you get locked up that first time, it's very hard to um, escape after that, you know, because, yeah, you just sort of lose hope in society. Yeah. Um, and then you, you're getting put around other criminals as well you know if you're going to prison so it becomes very hard to um to rehabilitate after that 
Um, like what? So, like speaking now, so has crime sort of um, is crime uh, increasing at the moment? Is it sort of plateauing or is it just steady shooting up? Because it just seems on the news and stuff. I mean, every other day there's a shooting. There's something going on now. Ever since the enactment of the uh, immigration policy in Australia, where our New Zealand citizens have been returned after they've committed a crime in Australia that's worth going to prison for, uh, that sort of changed uh, things quite a bit. Um, what, so what are sort of the crime hotspots here in New Zealand, you know, or from the research that you've done? Um, what are sort of the, yeah, I guess the crime hotspots? Is it South Auckland? Is, is it, you know, I thought it would be like the city or? Well, it depends. If you're talking about white collar crime, okay, uh, which is the kind of crime that's very expensive, okay, uh, tax evasion, fraud, and all that, uh, it's not South Auckland, it's the CBD. Yeah. Uh, who commits them? Uh, those guys with uh, suits and neckties. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you two yeah. examples. Hanover Finance. Hanover Finance went down because of major fraud, okay, mm -hmm. in Auckland. And uh, what happened? The owner of Hanover Finance, although you know, it's gone to court and you know, all that kind of stuff, the owner of Hanover Finance is still living in the Gold Coast uh, in his mansion. Imagine if that was some sort of a stealing, uh, stealing $100 in a dairy in South Auckland. Whoa, it'll be in the news. Oh, yeah. Okay, the second example is uh, Canterbury Finance. Major, massive company, finance company. Uh, went down because of fraud. Uh, what did the government do? They bailed uh, Canterbury Finance out. In other words, they used a taxpayer's money to bail out Canterbury Finance. Uh, we, we've had debates about this, uh, but you know, some people say, oh, well, it's for the benefit of the economy. I don't agree with that. Uh, a sin is a sin. <laughs> you know, a crime is a crime. Uh, so, and, and some of these people are still you know, free. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, what Hotspots, you know, of hotspots of crime in, in New Zealand, it's not South Auckland. So in terms of those expensive kind of crimes, expensive to the taxpayer, which is you and I, you and me, okay, it's not South Auckland. More crimes were committed not in South Auckland, but out west at that particular time. This is Auckland. But in terms of the national statistics, more crimes were committed in Christchurch. Now, you, you never hear that in the news. Uh, and if you understand how gangs uh, work, you know, gangs from South Auckland will go to uh, the North Shore, commit some crimes in there, and vice versa. And that happens a lot. Okay, we have turf wars every single day, day in, day out. That happens uh, amongst uh, gangs and between gangs. But... Uh, Hot spots of crime right now, uh, it's not South Auckland. I had a good interview with a retired police officer uh, some time ago, I think about eight years ago. And he said when he was uh, in the force, whenever they go out to South Auckland, when a crime is reported from South Auckland, they bust doors. No question. But if it's reported from places like Rimwera, he mentioned Rimwera. He said, you know, the, the owner who might be a judge or a lawyer or a doctor will just stand at the veranda of the house and say, uh, have you got a warrant uh, to come into my place? And uh, he may even call out, everything has been sorted, it's just a domestic. Uh, it's, it's a family business, uh, no, no breaking of the law here. And they move on. They don't bust doors in that place. Yeah. And uh, so, so police practices have been critiqued uh, from time to time. 
yeah yeah and especially with the reporting of crime i mean really then where they're going to get the most reports is where wherever they're over policing i guess you know yeah. what i mean the areas where there are going to be a lot of cops patrolling that's where a lot of the reports are going to be because there's so many of them you know because there's crime everywhere yeah. you know there's crime everywhere all over auckland nowadays you know i uh, look at i think it was 2008 uh john key uh promised 225 new cops to Countess Maruko at the very time. So the, the understanding of that, 225 new cops to Countess Maruko, what does that tell us? This is where most crimes are happening at. When it was uh, during that particular time, more crimes were committed out west. Mm. So why didn't they put more police out west? I don't know. Yeah. I do know the answer, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Again, it's just society, eh? The way they're trying to set yeah. up, the way they, they use media as well to sort of um, sway people, I guess, um, for whatever political reasons as well. You know, there's always political reasons um, behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, votes, things like that, elections. Um, they want to be seen yeah. like they're doing something, all of those sort of things. Brother, what about... Um, all right, so what about legal representation for people that, for, for youth that are going to court? You know, so, um, you know, is that playing a part as well where, you know, certain, I guess, white ethnic background people will be getting let off? Is it that play a part as well, being able to afford legal representation, being able to afford lawyers, things like that? Affordability is, uh, is a key thing. Uh, I think you've hit that on the head. Uh, most of our young people, if not all of them, are represented by legal aid lawyers. And in the past, uh, there have been you know, criticisms and critiques, formal critiques of the, uh, the legal aid system. Uh, whereas uh, some of these young people, like the young people I mentioned earlier, uh, from more affluent kind of families, uh, their families forked in thousands of dollars to uh, to defend the case, and they won. Can our young people uh, afford that? Again, it goes down, boils down to the structure of the whole system. Okay, legal aid is there almost like to say there is support here for you, when in actual fact, uh, those legal lawyers will just fill in forms. The more forms you fill in, the more money you sort of uh, get in terms of representing somebody but it's very minimal still compared to a big, massive case that you pick up uh, of somebody from a very big family. Imagine, you know, this, uh, I use this with uh, all due respect, okay, that family was not represented or implicated in any crime, but it's just an example. Uh, how, how would it be if somebody says, um, John Key is looking for a lawyer? Uh, to represent his son, man, lawyers will be flooding to that, you know, phone number. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm willing, I'm available. Okay. What if there's somebody from South Auckland, an unknown uh, Pacific Island family in South Auckland? Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. best that the system will do for such a young person is legal aid. So, yeah, again, it goes deep. It goes deep, all of this stuff. Um as you'd know. Um, what about sort of, um, do you sort of see like uh, suicide things, um, you know, with the youth? I know they're here in New Zealand, it's just awfully high, you know, coming from Australia as well, you know, so I lived in Australia, so coming yeah. back here, it's quite <laughs> massively high here, it's crazy. Yeah, suicide is not my field. I have a colleague who looks into suicide as part of her research. But generally speaking, if you look at what's going on, uh, suicide amongst our Pacific Island uh, young people has uh, gone up again. Now, about five, seven years ago, uh, Samoans were at the top, uh, oh, okay. overrepresented oh, in wow. here. Okay. Samoan young people, then it was the Tongans. Right now, it's a Tongan community. Really? Which is very unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, very unfortunate. Tongan young people. There were two cases that I sort of followed uh, some time ago where a young, young Tongan girl committed suicide at church. 
And so ever since that, I've tried to communicate with the church, especially the leadership of uh, churches, and say, come on, it's one thing to preach the gospel, but if we're not connected socially and supporting our young people socially, and then, of course, uh, we're missing something. Yeah, well, yeah, that's new information. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That um, I honestly assumed it was Māori, you know, that was sort of um, high up there, but it's all Pacifica, isn't it? Wow. I yeah, ratio-wise, yeah, it's Pacific. Wow. So I'm on Tongan specifically, yeah. Is that, are those isolated to particular areas as well, is it, or just all across the board? Uh, as of recent times, it's out east, East Auckland, Plain Innes, Pamua, mm. that area. So, uh, so is selling drugs quite common with a lot of these youths? Um, I uh, yes. The exploitation by the more established uh, gangs you know, of young people uh, who may belong to set up gangs uh, that are known to be feeder gangs uh, as, as a real problem. And uh, I interviewed one person from an established uh, gang. He said, well, you know, some of these young people, you give them $100, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And if, if you ask them, okay, you go sell uh, however many, okay, for this period of time. And uh, there's your cut $100 from every sale of however many uh, drugs you sell. And now that's a lot of money. And if they do that uh, on a daily basis, of course, some of those young people will earn more than what their parents do. But they don't take drugs. That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. So there is an assumption that when young people sell drugs, they also do drugs. Not all of them do that. Well, that's the information I received uh, from some of the interviews. Like and so some of these, uh, yeah. Sorry. With more, um, how, how much would you say that that does contribute? Um, you know, the influence of you know gangs or more established gangs. How 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 much does that influence in youth crime? Would you, do you think? Well, uh, majorly, okay. Especially if these established uh, gangs uh, target the right kind of young people. Uh, when I say the right kind of young people, I'm referring to the kind of young people that are already disconnected uh, from school. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these established uh, gangs are very smart in the way they, they scout the area and the way they uh, try to locate uh, people to recruit. Why? Because all of a sudden, they're holding $200 a day. All of a sudden. Uh, the best they've ever had in their life is uh, $2 for lunch, uh, school lunch. But all of a sudden, 200 bucks a day, that's huge to some of these young people. And they will come back. So, well, is there anything else that you sort of wanted to talk about? Or, um, you know, what's some sort of resolutions that, um, that you can sort of see moving forward? Uh one of the best ways uh, to, uh, to, to deal with uh, youth crime is to respect them, understand where they're coming from. Uh, the moment we start off with the, uh, uh, the, the accusation, you know, accusing them, uh, they put up their defenses straight away. And that's the very time when they will never be willing to listen to us anymore. So further down the line, we may come up with a program of trying to connect with these young people. It will take a very long time for them to gain our trust again. So if our starting point is accusation, we, we lose them straight away. So right now, even if it's the worst of criminal offenders that we have heard of, uh, there is still an opportunity, there is still a chance that somewhere in his brain, you know, he's willing to listen to something. The best of people that have been able to help young people are those who are willing to sit down and listen to the stories. No judgment whatsoever. 
all you do is sit down, listen to them. The questions that you give them to answer is the questions about their life, their journey. And then eventually, once you gain their trust, you know, they, they will open up and say, well, you know, in reality, I really don't like uh, doing what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm putting my family uh, at shame. Once they hit that part of the road, you're, 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 you're successful. So blessings to you, my brother. Yeah, and no, uh, wish you all the best. Well. All right. Well, thank you so much, man. Have a beautiful rest of the day. And um, God bless, brother. Thank you. And likewise.